Hello everyone. We are looking at the cat skull today, specifically the bones of the skull. So, um, I guess we'll start at the front. <laughs> right above the nares, the kind of nose hole, we have two triangular pieces that are the, uh, the nasal bones. Above that, the forehead, kind of forehead front top of the cat skull is the frontal bone. Moving backward, the sides of the brain case, so the walls of the brain case, are the, the two parietal bones on either side. And those extend down, um, and pretty much the whole back top of the brain case. In between the parietals, the triangular section, which may be very small in some cases, in some individuals it's just like a little button, uh, but it is the interparietal bone, is this triangular segment here. The whole back of the bone, which includes this ridge, you can see that a divisionary line, the suture right here. That is the occipital bone. And in some practices, the occipital is divided into sections. For our purposes, the whole back part is the occipital. In between the frontal and the parietal bone is the coronal suture, and it divides the skull in the coronal plane. You cut it that way. Beneath the parietal bone, you can see a suture running kind of along around this projection. This is the temporal bone on the temples. And um, a projection from that temporal bone is the zygomatic process of the temporal, which is part of what forms the zygomatic arch. This front section of the zygomatic arch is the jugal, sometimes called the zygomatic bone, uh, often in human medicine practices. We have the maxillary bone, or the maxilla, and that comes down the sides of the nose and contains the canines, premolars, and in the cat's case, this tiny molar back here but all of the teeth except the incisors is contained within this maxilla. In front of the maxilla, and kind of snaking up a little segment in between the nasals and maxilla, this is the premaxilla bone, and it contains the incisors, at least what incisors are left on this specimen. In the premaxilla, the upright section, premaxilla, is what you see here, the horizontal flange coming off the bottom is the palatine process of the premaxilla, and it's pretty small, contains the incisive foramina. Similarly, with the maxilla, you have this upright vertical section here, and then a horizontal flange coming off of it to form the palatine process of the premaxilla, this whole section here, still containing the teeth. And this last section under this arch, like palatine suture, is the palatine process of the palatine. So it is a mouthful, but all of it needs to be included to be very specific in what you're talking about. So that is the structure that we are naming. Palatine process of the palatine. Now the palatine bone is part of what we're going to define in this lower orbital area, um, but you can see the suture kind of going around here. Specifically right here and there is a pretty strong suture right up there. And the palatine bone itself contains these two foramina, the sphenopalatine and posterior palatine, um, named kind of for the bone that they pass through. So palatine bone, posterior palatine, uh, palatine process of the palatine. <laughs> the front corner of the orbit, we have the lacrimal uh, bone. <laughs> and the lacrimal bone contains the nasolacrimal canal right here. Um, in some animals that have elongated faces, this lacrimal bone will bleed out, essentially. It'll be, this bone will be pulled out in that lengthening of the rostrum. In the back half of the orbit, we have a series of bones here, uh, bones, <laughs> a series of holes and bones. <laughs> um, but you can use this set of four bones, which we'll talk about in the foramina video, to specifically talk about, or to, to help locate the parts of the sphenoid. So the sphenoid is 
uh, kind of a wing-like shape, big structure at the base of the skull, and it has three parts. So the basal sphenoid is this triangular segment at the top. If you look at the tympanic bully, these are one singular tympanic bulla, two tympanic bully. Uh, they are associated with the auditory mechanisms. Um, and bulla means balloon, and you can see why. <laughs> so the basal sphenoid is this triangular section here. And it has two wing-like projections coming off and around the brain case. Uh, the allosphenoid sphenoid contains these last two foramina, the foramen rotundum, foramen rot oval, and then half of the orbital fissure. And the orbital fissure is named because of that suture between the allosphenoid, which arches up and around here, and the presphenoid, which goes forward. It is in front, the presphenoid. So allosphenoid contains these two foramina and half of this one. So foramina two and three in this sequence from front to back. And then also forms part of this ridge here. The presphenoid, again, we'll take a closer look at that suture in the orbital fissure opening here. And it's an orbital fissure. In some animals, it's much more elongated. It's kind of a, an elliptical hole. In cats, it's pretty condensed, so it just looks like a foramen. Um, so yes, that orbital fissure with the division between the, the presphenoid and the allosphenoid contains, so the presphenoid contains your optic foramen, the first hole, and then half of that orbital fissure. It goes forward here. And that presphenoid also has a, a part that expresses visually uh, at, the at the very base of the skull here. So with cats, it looks kind of like an arrow. Presphenoid right there. So presphenoid sticking through here and also here. If you look up into these internal nares, nares you see a, a V-like projection of bone that is coming down. And that V-like projection is part of the vomer, which most of it is where we can't see it underneath the hard palate, but we still see a bit of it. V for vomer. The pterygoid process in the cat is this sort of triangular section here that's sticking off at the bottom of the skull. So pterygoid process in the cat because it is fused to the allosphenoid. This is part of that allosphenoid coming around. Pterygoid process. And on the very end, the very little hook-like part, which may be gone in some of your specimens that you are, but the very end of it is the hamulus. And hamulus means hook, so it's a little hook. On a fox, this, this one is actually broken. <laughs> uh, the, the, the fox is, yeah. <laughs> our, our foxes have very delicate um, hamuli specifically, so they are not quite intact. Uh, but this particular fox is showing, uh, you can actually see, because it is broken, you can see the separation of the pterygoid. The pterygoid bone is separate from the allosphenoid. It is its own thing, and it actually extends down here, as you can see on the diagram. Uh, and you can see that lamination separation of the pterygoid that I'm moving, <laughs> and then the allosphenoid, which comes out there. So, full pterygoid bone in the fox, pterygoid process in the cat. One last bone is the ethmoid bone, which sometimes has a little expression right next to the lacrimal bone. You'll see like a little section of bone that just has, you know, a point sticking out here, um, or just a little small circular definition of a suture. Uh, but often, you will not see the ethmoid bone on the outside but you can see it by looking through the foramen magnum back here and angling through so you can see come on yeah <laughs> so you can see that cribriform plate up in the front which in this specimen still has some tissue in there which is kind of annoying um but that archway with lacy like bone structures is part of the ethmoid um, and that cribriform plate is a section of ethmoid that has many holes. And those 
are the bones of the skull.